Okay guys, so we're back in Helldivers again today where everything is just going rampant as the game seems to be collectively growing in popularity. Today we've got so much going on right now with regards to the Helldivers 2 sample cheats that have been happening to a lot of people inside of the game. On top of that, we're going to talk about numbers and how it's stabilizing and some crossovers via other games, aka Destiny 2 as an example. We've got a lot to go over from this time title so if you haven't already smash that beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe with post notifications turned on it'd be greatly appreciated on top of that check out our sponsor for today's video advanced gg the number one clinically proven energy supplement on the market my favorite flavor is cherry vanilla but you guys can catch an array of flavors via the link in the description and using code cloud at checkout will get you a cheeky discount so with that being said without any further ado let's dive on in to the news today so quickly getting over this one first cheats inside of the game obviously pc games are well induced with cheats hacks and all of these bloody problems that come with pc gaming but helldivers 2 sample cheats are ruining the grind for anyone unlucky enough to play with them now players have reported a variety of cheats and exploits for arrowhead's explosive co-op focused third person shooter hacks are adding infinite animo infinite speed that is increasing all the time and even allowing players to trigger god mode a recent popular exploit triggers an infinite stratagem glitch which causes even more chaos on the battlefield than what we're experiencing anyway now some players have also ended up playing in a group with cheaters who are able to obtain hundreds of samples from missions now samples are one of the key currencies in helldivers 2 progression now with some only found on the harder difficulties they're used by ship module upgrades which are powerful passive buffs and then even then can significantly boost players effectiveness obtaining samples is part of the helldivers 2 grind and under circumstances it would take players a long time to unlock all of the ship modules now one player who ended up in a group with a cheater wondered whether their progress could be rolled back to before they played a match in which they obtained a huge number of samples obtained samples are uh, shared among players within the the group upon mission objective completions now these sample cheats appear to be on the rise based on player reports across the helldivers 2 community as you can see on this screen right here this is an abnormal amount of samples that people are obtaining just by playing with cheaters which is just really sad and it's just ruining a lot of experiences for a lot of other people the enjoyment of this game is that it is so grindy and those people who like those live service models who just like grinding to get the gear to upgrade and then move through to the next difficulty grind through some more play more and gain more of the currency to upgrade the modules even further like they're just taking that away from everyone and for me that is just so freaking ridiculous because cheaters are just ruining people's experience for no reason at all completely eradicating so how it is that they're going to approach that one with inside arrowhead is is yet to be seen i don't really know how it is that they can but it just seems to be something that maybe making quite a few banned accounts is going to be happening over oncoming weeks and months but we'll have to see how that one plays out especially considering at the moment the peak is so damn high with an average 24 hour peak which is consistently on the rise i may add an all-time peak two days ago was at 458,709 whereas our 24 hour peak is at 458,046 so it's looking to stay at around a consistent level and even rising further obviously there has been quite a decrease in the numbers overall mainly because of people sat afk which i didn't think would be a lot of people but apparently it's a lot more than we substantially thought at the beginning with 167,000 people currently playing as i'm making this video but again it's a monday Day afternoon so you're not expecting those numbers to peak but when they did peak though we experienced something really freaking good this weekend for those of you guys who don't know the server caps have just gone up to 800,000 which is a ginormous number with obviously having around half a million people on steam and then playstation having about 40 percent of that totaled so maybe having a few queues at certain times of the day when the server is completely maxed out but around about 700,000 people 
to 800,000 people are playing on a busy period, which is a hell of a lot of people. Now, the CEO of Arrowhead, Mr. Johan, posted up on Twitter, I'm really happy and proud of the Arrowhead team for an amazing achievement. The service handled all Helldivers 2 players this weekend without problem. Now we have time to focus on improvements to the title and resume our original plan. Many exciting things to come, which is absolutely incredible to hear because realistically, they just worked so damn hard over this last week to really make sure that they pushed it to the limits and make sure that they can substantially hold exactly what they're holding. And with some help from Sony and PlayStation, they definitely managed to achieve that one. So a massive, massive well done to that Arrowhead team for being able to sustain what it is that they promised they would sustain. Now, on top of that, as far as additional pieces, though, crossovers seem to be something that we need to obviously talk about. As Crips actually posted up a bit of a gimmick right here, which was the Destiny 2 and Helldivers 2 Hunter fashion, bit of a crossover movement. And Johan, the CEO of Arrowhead, turned up and said on that tweet that it is super cool. And I love these kind of crossovers that make sense to the world right and then tagged Bungie which is actually something that we could end up seeing in the future obviously Arrowhead are signified down to Sony which is why it's an exclusive as well as the fact that Sony obviously own Bungie now so when we work it on that basis these crossovers are very very likely to happen and if you think in your right mind with these games that the cosmetic crossovers are not going to stem from it then it is definitely definitely going to happen it'd be really cool to see how these crossovers could work and it means it gives a lot more expansion to the game as far as availability to new players and new systems now depending on how they do it it does mean that it could be a shit bit ship shapey but nonetheless they could do it extremely well if they just focus around the cosmetics only then we could be experiencing a really cool piece now imagine like a god of war themed piece of armor or even like a destiny themed armor set or we're just looking at just companies that are working with sony specifically it opens the doors to a hell of a lot less let alone if they ever got big enough to be able to stem through to like Star Wars cooperations and stuff like that, which obviously mainly focus around Fortnite, I'm aware, because of obviously the whole Disney maneuver. But as an overall, there's so much more room and potential for crossovers inside of this game, and it definitely looks like the CEO of Arrowhead is well and truly down for this. So I'm kind of excited to see how that one can pan, especially as he's evidently sending messages over towards ben Bungie to either sort of like initiate initiate some sort of communication or maybe there's already communication there because they both are segregated to Sony's platform we just don't know how it works but we know full well that it's definitely definitely going to work now obviously with a live service game of this size and stature you'd like to hope that there's no sort of pay to win modeling obviously right now we're not really witnessing that but there is room for wiggles when it comes to store mechanics this game is really really good when it comes to using your credits for items in store cosmetically really pleasing and it's dirt cheap and works really well so i would like to say that if they've got crossovers coming they could do this really really easily and do it with the team actually on side so we're excited to see as hell divers how they can corroborate this one although don't expect it for a little while because the likelihood is is right now the servers are now stable and everything's sorted their next move is going to be content based updates and what they can bring to the table with that one of which one of the talks was about swords which the ceo has addressed on twitter and if you guys haven't seen the video we posted up earlier on with regards to that you'll find it in the top right annotation right now or you'll even find it on the channel where we've got loads of news coming up over the last few days with regards to this game but another thing everybody's been talking about right now which people are a little bit stemmed on is the dlss now this is something that has been spoke about for the last few days and people have been taking this in the wrong regard and we did address earlier on that the ceo johan actually turned around and said that he didn't say it wasn't coming he just wanted to prefer to focus on gameplay over cool tech now somebody actually tweeted at him earlier on stating DLSS would help a lot of older PCs play the game, especially because, to be honest, the render scale doesn't do much and it makes the game look really bad. Now, the CEO of Arrowhead responded by saying, true, but most of the performance load is on the CPU since we simulate everything, which is a really good factor, although what it does mean is that DLSS should be coming in the later ends of time period and it will be coming eventually, mainly because it will be a lot better for like broadening the horizon on the player base and being 
being able to bring in maybe some of the older PCs and older systems that aren't able to currently take it based on the way that it kind of looks. Obviously, when you lower the render scale, it means it is going to look really bad. So DLSS is something that they will definitely bring in later down the line, although they want to obviously make their forefront content based, which is really, really acceptable. And I think that that's actually probably the best move that they are going to be able to make with this one and focusing solely on the content and the way that it is inside of the game right now and bringing in the DLSS as a later feature. But I would expect that we will definitely be seeing this at a later date. Now, unfortunately, that's all from me. If you guys are enjoying the content here on Helldivers 2, then make sure you reward it with a beautiful blue thumbs up and a comment in the comment section saluting for democracy. It'd be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much again for watching, guys. Appreciate your faces and hopefully we'll see you later on for another upload here on the channel. Thanks again for watching. Appreciate you all. And as always, I'll see you in the clouds. Thank you.